Hello everyone, you are now watching Tanya Chat Group live from BAC Flix Studio. My name is Christina and I will help to answer all your questions regarding Chemistry SPM for the next two hours. Send your questions in the comment box or FB Messenger, SPM Flix. So SPM is really, really close, all right? So I'm sure you all are studying really hard. So today uh, we will have uh, chemistry again, okay? Um, untuk kimia, so boleh hantarkan solan-solan. Okay, so the first question daripada Jasmine Alia. Uh, Raja tujuh menunjukkan susunan elektron bagi molekul karbon dioksida. Uh, yang mana karbon na? Okay, so you have to understand karbon dioksida. Cikgu hanya lukis uh, petala yang paling luar saja. Okay, so karbon ada empat elektron. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Yang paling luar, elektron di uh, paling petala paling luar, karbon ada empat, oksigen ada enam. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam. One, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay, so <coughs> satu atom karbon menyumbang empat elektron untuk dikongsi dengan dua atom oksigen. Satu karbon menyumbang empat elektron untuk dikongsi dengan dua atom oksigen. Ah betul lah, A betul. B empat ikatan kovalen ganda dua, bukan empat dua ikatan kovalen ganda dua saja. Okay, satu Dua, dua ikatan ganda dua. Setiap oksigen menyumbang satu elektron tak. Setiap oksigen menyumbang dua elektron. Uh, satu atom karbon memerlukan dua elektron tak. Satu atom karbon memerlukan empat. Okay, so jawapan dia A. Okay, so can I have the next question? Uh, Persamaan berikut mewakili tindak balas antara larutan natrium tayar sulfat dan asid sulfurik. Okey, so. 20 cm3 air suling ditambahkan kepada campuran itu. Apakah perbezaan penambahan air suling kepada campuran berbanding tiada penambahan air suling? So, apabila air suling ditambah, ini menjadikan kepekatan menurun less concentrated okey apabila kepekatan menurun uh, air suling ditambah kepada air suling ditambah kepada yang mana kepada campuran oh so disebabkan ditambahkan kepada campuran um, hanya Hanya uh, sekiranya ditambahkan kepada campuran tindak balas sudah berlaku, okay? So campuran itu tak ada perbezaan kepada kadar tindak balas selain ditambahkan kepada uh, sodium tayar sulfat atau ditambahkan kepada asid sulfurik, okay? Uh, jumlah isi padu sulfur dioksida tidak akan berubah. Okay. Kepekatan natrium sulfat tidak meningkat, dia akan menurun. Uh, jumlah isi padu air meningkat. Uh, yalah, hanya jumlah isi padu air meningkat. C saja. Yang lain tak ada kaitan. Okay. Sebab uh, kadar tindak balas sudah berlaku, bukan sebelum berlaku. Soalan kata, apakah perbezaan penambahan air kepada campuran? Okey. Bukan kepada sodium tayar sulfat atau bukan kepada inilah selepas ditambah. So, tak ada perubahan kepada kadar tindak balas sebab tindak balas sudah berlaku. Okay, can I have the next question? Okay, Daya, Raja Sub, oh, daripada Muhammad Aiman. Raja sebelum menunjukkan gambar Raja profil tenaga bagi tindak balas antara P dan Q. Okey, so ini tindak balas eksotermik. Apakah uh, nilai 
X. Oh, okay. Cikgu sedang cari X di mana dalam gambar raja. Okay, so yang ini. Okay. Jumlah tenaga diterima. Ialah 180. Jumlah tenaga dibebaskan. Ialah 80. So, jumlah X ialah perbezaan tindak balas sahaja di sini. Dari sini sampai sini saja. So, jika 80, 180 ialah di sini ke sini. Dan 80 ialah dari sini ke sini. So, X ialah sini ke sini sahaja. So, 80. Eh, sorry, 100. 180 tolak 80 ialah 100 kJ. Uh, tindak balas ini endotermik sebab meningkat. So, jawapannya A. Positif 100 kJ per mol. Okay? Sebab endotermik. Jumlah uh, pro endotermik. Endotermik hanya uh, satu jawapan saja iaitu A untuk 100. Okay? Can I have the next question? Uh, sifat unsur akan berubah merentasi kala dari kiri ke kanan. Okay, merentasi kala dalam jadual berkala. Mana satu antara berikut menunjukkan perubahan tersebut? Uh, Tadat takat di D meningkat. Tidak sebab daripada logam, dia menjadi bukan logam. So, takat di D sebenarnya menurun. <coughs> Sifat oksida base meningkat tidak sebab logam adalah log, logam oksida logam ialah base oksida bukan logam ialah asidik so dia akan menurun uh, konduksian kekonduksian elektrik meningkat tak menurun elektronegatif kan elektronegatif meningkat yes sebab daripada mempunyai satu elektron dia meningkat menjadi tujuh elektron oleh itu, kebolehan untuk menerima elektron meningkat. So, jawapan dia D. Okay. Can I have the next question? Teacher, what are the chapters in chemistry that I need to score in paper 1 and 2? Uh, okay. Um, if you have not had time to study, I mean, exams are very near, um, you need to know how to answer a little bit of every chapter. That means you must know how to answer uh, um, compounds, okay? chemical compounds, your ionic and covalent, you must know. You must know how to answer according to periodic table. Okay, You must be able to know how to do electrolysis. These are a few important things. But you see, I cannot just ask you to study a few chapters because it's very common in SPM. Every single chapter, there's one question. Alright, every single chapter there's one question. So you know how you need to know how to answer every chapter. Alright? So uh, you need to know, of course, for form five, the easier chapter is rate of reaction. Okay? And the easier one is, for example, redox. Okay? So these are the few chapters that you really need to study. Alright, but if you my best advice is go and do your passive papers and study according to the questions, the type of questions that come out in your passive papers. That means learn how to answer questions. Okay? Alright. Uh, can I have a next question? Uh, famous type of question. Okay. Salts, carbon compounds and redox. Okay. So, let's start with uh, salts. Salts, they always ask you to prepare one question and they ask you to identify. Okay? In asking you to prepare, you must know how to prepare a soluble salt. We talked about it already using titration or acid neutralization. You must know how to prepare the difference between preparing a soluble and insoluble salt. So you must know from adding the chemicals all the way to crystallization and so on. Okay? So identify, you must be able to identify the cations and anions. Alright, so those are important. So we've already gone through many, many times how to identify cations, how to identify anions. Okay, alright, now uh, carbon compounds. 
For carbon compounds, you must know how it changes from alkanes to alkenes to alcohols and carboxylic acid. You must know how they change in between. So how does an alkene change to alkane? Hydration. How a hydrogenation? How does an alkene change to alcohol? Hydration. Alcohol change to alkene? Dehydration. Alcohol to carboxylic acid? Oxidation. How to do esterification to make an ester? So all the conditions, everything you must remember. Okay? And then you must know how to name them. So for carbon compounds, most important, you need to know how they interchange. Hydrogenation. Hydration dehydration, oxidation, okay, and esterification. What are the conditions, how to draw it, and everything, okay? And uh, oxidation and reduction, oh wow, that's a really long chapter. So for oxidation and reduction, you must know about, remember I was talking to you about electrochemical series, about the metals, if you're higher, they love to release electrons. The higher they are, the more they love to release electrons. The ones that are lower, the lower they are, they love to receive electrons. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, the next thing is you must know how the metals react with carbon. Where is carbon in the series? So carbon is between aluminium and zinc. <coughs> so carbon can react with metals that are higher than, uh, lower than it. Metal oxides that are lower than, for example, iron oxide. Okay, so this one, carbon can steal the oxygen to form carbon dioxide iron. Alright, however, for, uh, for uh, metals that are higher than it, it cannot. So this one, nothing happens. So, and then after that, for redox, you must know the colour change. Okay, the colour change for certain chemicals, for example, the colour change of acidified potassium manganate 7. So even if you don't know what's the colour change, you just write purple to colourless. You don't know what happens, you just write purple to colourless. Okay? So, <laughs> usually that's the colour change. La. They won't ask you what happens and then nothing happens. You see, something happens. La. And then for bromine water, it's brown to colourless. So you need to know the colour changes and so on. Okay? <laughs> okay, that's a very good question. A lot of students get confused. What is the difference between molarity, mole, M-O-L, M-O-L-E? Actually, okay, first of all, M-O-L and M-O-L-E is the same thing. It's just writing gram and gram. That's it. So this is usually when we say one mole and one mole. It's like writing one gram and one gram. So basically, it's the same thing. Now, molarity is different. Molarity is concentration for an aqua solution, but the unit is in mole per decimeter cube. That means I take one mole of sodium chloride solid and I put it in one decimeter cube of water. Therefore, my molarity is one mole per one decimeter cube. Therefore, it is one mole per decimeter cube. So, molarity, molarity is our M in MV over 1000. MV 1000, the M stands for molarity. But one mole is when we have mass over molar mass. We are looking for amount of moles. Okay? Or volume over molar volume, we are looking for amount of moles. Or MV over 1000, we are also looking for amount of moles. So the molarity is the concentration, the M in MV over 1000. Okay? Okay, can I have a next question? Okay, from Arun Ventreville. Cikgu, macam mana nak buat persamaan setengah untuk... Oh, okay, okay. So... Um, Persamaan setengah untuk potassium dichromate dan uh, potassium manganate. Okay, senang saja. Okay. Now, 
Biasanya tidak ditanya lah. Biasanya tidak ditanya. Tetapi sekiranya ditanya, don't panic. Cr two O seven two negatif merupakan ejen pengoksidaan. So ejen pengoksidaan mestinya mengalami penurunan. Yang kamu kena hafal ialah Cr two O seven two negatif itu menjadi ion chromium. That's why dia menjadi from apa warna? Ingat tak? Okay, from orange to uh, orange to green. Okay, so that's the color change. Okay, now so we balance the equation. Sini ada Cr three positive. This one is Cr two O seven two negative. Sini it's got two Cr right, so we put two Cr. See that? Okay, so seven oxygen. We balance oxygen with water. So now we've got seven oxygen. Here we've got seven water. Okay. <coughs> now seven times two is fourteen. So it has to be acidified, right? So we put fourteen hydrogen ion. Okay, this hydrogen. That's why we always say acidified or uh, potassium dichromate berasid. Dia berasid kenapa? Kerana you tambah asid lah. Tak ada asid, tindak balas tak, ada, tak boleh berlaku. Kemudian kita cuma um, imbangkan. So, 2 negative is negative 2. Positive 14. Positive 14 equals to positive 12. Di sebelah kiri, positive 12. Over here, 3 darab 2, positive 6. So, positive 6 dan positive 12 tak balance lah. Kita kena balance kan. Tambah apa? Tambah 6 elektron. Sebab setiap-tiap satu elektron, negatif 1, negatif 6, uh, sekarang seimbang. Okay? So, itulah cara untuk tulis persamaan setengah untuk potassium dichromate. Okay. Persamaan setengah untuk potassium magnetic. Sama saja. KMNO4. Dia juga berasid. So, biasanya kamu nampak macam ni. Uh, dia macam ni sebab dia berasid dia ditambahkan dengan asid biasanya kita tak kata asid sajalah tapi jika dalam exam dia tulis ditambahkan dengan asid nitrik ah jangan paniklah sama saja maksudnya ditambahkan dengan asid okey so mno4 negatif menjadi mno uh, sorry eh, mn2 positif okey so 1 mn 1 mn Empat oksigen, empat air. Okey. Lepas tu kita balancekan, imbangkan empat darab dua, lapan. So, sini tulis lapan ion hidrogen. Ha, kemudian kita kirakan apakah jumlah. Okey, negatif satu tambah dengan lapan jadi positif tujuh. Ha, di sini positif dua. So, macam mana imbangkan? Perlu berapa elektron? Perlukan... 5 elektron. So, kita tambahkan 5. Tambahkan negatif 5. Negatif 5 ialah 5 elektron. So, ini persamaan setengah untuk kedua-duanya. Okay, molarity. Arun, what do you want to know about molarity? Okay, like I said just now, molarity is the mole per decimeter cube. Bila kita untuk ekos, kepekatan bagi ekos ialah mol per decimeter cube. So, semasa kita kira bilangan mol untuk ekos, kita selalu hafal MV over 1000. MV over 1000. M ini ialah molarity. Okay? Can I have the next question? Okay. Uzumaki. Terangkan tentang haba penyesaran, haba penyucuran dan haba penggak karan dan haba pemendakan. So cikgu tak pasti kamu nak uh, apakah uh, maksudnya is it? Sekiranya mak maksudnya kamu selalu uh, kena hafal lah maksud. Haba penyesaran ialah haba yang dibebaskan apabila satu mol logam disesarkan daripada larutan garamnya. Okay, yang itu kamu boleh hafal daripada buku teks atau buku rujukan. Haba penyucuran ialah haba yang dibebaskan apabila satu mol air dibentuk daripada tindak balas antara asid dan alkali. Haba pembakaran ialah haba yang dibebaskan apabila satu mol bahan api dipanaskan dengan se uh, dengan sepenuhnya dengan kehadiran oksigen. Dan haba pemendakan ialah haba yang dibebaskan apabila satu mol uh, garam dimendakkan daripada larutannya. Okey. So, sekiranya kamu nak tanya uh, maksud itulah maksud. Sekiranya kamu tak nak tahu macam mana kira, okey. Untuk haba penyesaran, 
kita perlu ada sesuatu larutan garam contohnya kuprum sulfat okey you need to know the uh, isi padu dan uh, apakah kepekatan atau molarity kemolaran kemudian kamu tambahkan dengan logam yang lebih uh, lebih lebih reaktif okey lebih elektropositif so inilah haba penyesaran So, apa yang kamu perlu buat ialah ambil termometer suhu meningkat. So, kamu kena kira MC theta. M ialah isi padu aquas yang diberikan. C ialah haba uh, 4.2, haba yang diberikan. Dan theta ialah ten, perubahan tenaga, uh, perubahan uh, uh, suhu. So, lepas tu kamu tukarkan unit dia daripada joule. Tukar kepada kilo joule. Okay, kemudian unit itu dibahagikan dengan bilangan mol. So sekiranya kamu ada soalan tentang pengiraan ini cikgu boleh kira untuk kamu. Okey boleh tunjukkan. So haba penyutralan ialah apabila kamu tambahkan asid dan alkali. So of course you need to know apakah isi padu, apakah kemolaran. Okey, kemudian juga suhu yang meningkat. Dan untuk semua tindak balas ini, kita perlukan uh, cawan polistrin atau cawan plastik. Sekiranya soalan bagi kamu uh, bika dan cik, uh, soalan kata macam mana nak uh, menjadikan suhu tidak dibebaskan ke persekitaran, kamu guna uh, cawan plastik atau cawan polistrin. Sekiranya sudah guna cawan polistrin, macam mana? Gunakan dua lapisan cawan polistrin untuk mengurangkan lagi haba yang dibebaskan ke sekitaran. Okey, so haba penyesaran ini, haba uh, penyutralan di sini. Okey, haba pemendakan sama saja. Haba pemendakan sama saja, uh, salah satu larutan ditambah kepada satu larutan. Bezanya ialah, ialah satu larutan garam. Contohnya, uh, natrium klorida ditambahkan kepada larutan uh, agenda nitrat. Sama saja. Kebekatan uh, isi padu sama-sama. So, beza pengiraan untuk haba penyesaran, kamu punya M untuk MC theta hanya satu larutan saja 50. Okey, tetapi untuk yang ini apabila dua larutan digunakan, M yang kamu gunakan ialah 50 tambah dengan 50, jumlah isi padu larutan. Okey, so haba penyesaran dan haba penyutralan dan haba pemendakan cara pengiraan dia lebih kurang sama. Bezanya ialah M untuk penyesaran hanya ada satu isi padu. Okey, untuk pembakaran lain lah. Untuk haba pembakaran ialah apabila kamu gunakan bahan api untuk memanaskan sesuatu. Dan ini di dalam satu bekas tin, sini ialah air. So let's say 100 cm padu air. M, C tita, M ialah perubah, uh, isi padu air. Tita ialah perubahan suhu air. Tapi bilangan mol ialah bilangan mol bahan api yang kamu gunakan. Okay? So, sekiranya ada soalan tentang ini, kamu boleh uh, berikan kepada cikgu. Alright, can I have the next question? Standard solution. Oh, standard solution is basically, uh, first, you measure exactly the mass. Let's say you want to make standard solution of sodium hydroxide. So, you prepare exactly 40 grams. Lah. Okay, then you put inside a... Uh, volumetric flask. So first you put this one, you you add this one with water. Then you pour inside here, right not? Then you rinse it, rinse the beaker. Oh, sorry, sorry, must use beaker. Okay, you rinse the beaker with water to make sure everything goes inside. Then you must make sure you keep at eye level. Uh, okay, eye level. Okay, and then you must make sure it reaches exactly one decimeter cube. And then you cover, and then you turn it round and round. So it's all filled with water. So a standard solution is basically a solution that you know the concentration. So if you put exactly 40 grams of sodium hydroxide in exactly one decimeter cube of water, it's exactly one mole per decimeter cube of sodium hydroxide. Get it? So standard solution is, you just need to measure. Lah. So measure with the beaker, then uh, add exactly 40 and then put the water, uh, distilled water, then you pour inside, then you have to you have to rinse it with distilled water to make sure nothing sticks inside the beaker. Then you add, make sure you add exactly to one decimeter cube. Okay?
Alright, so I mean you don't have to use this lah, but anything that you use, you just have to make sure you put exactly one mole. It doesn't have to be one mole, it just is it's just a solution that you know the concentration. Next question. Okay, cikgu macam mana nak tentukan tindak balas redox? Oh, okay. First thing, sangat senang. Sekiranya dia ada elektron. Sekiranya persamaan kimia itu ada elektron kan. Uh, dia bukan redox. Dia hanya pengoksidaan atau penurunan. Okay, sebab redox mesti nampak elektron. Okay? Alright. So, contohnya untuk jawapan kamu yang uh, B dan C. Okay? Ini persamaan setengah. Persamaan setengah tak mungkin redox. Persamaan setengah yang ini penurunan. Sebab tambah elektron lah. Okay? Yang C pengoksidaan. Sebab beza, bebaskan elektron. So, ini bukan redox. Because it's only half. Dia hanya setengah saja. So, persamaan setengah bukan redox. Okay, A, jawapan dia A lah. Sebab cuprum ditambahkan dengan oksigen. Ini sangat very obvious lah. Ini tambah ini. Jadi, CuO dia sudah dioksidakan dan diturunkan. Uh, cuprum dioksidakan, oksigen diturunkan. Sebab, okay, whenever you don't know how to count, kamu kira uh, nombor pengoksidan. Cuprum elemen asalkan ialah unsur-unsur kosifa. Ini oksigen, unsur sifa. Dalam uh, uh, sebatian, bukan sifa. Kuprum positif dua, oksigen negatif dua. So, kuprum dioksidakan, oksigen diturunkan. Ha, ini redox lah. Okay, untuk D, D bukan jawapan juga. So, jawapan kamu A ya. A ialah redox. D juga bukan redox sebab kamu kira sahaja semuanya, semuanya sebatian. So, ini positif satu, ini negatif dua, ini positif satu. Ini positif satu, ini negatif satu, ini positif satu, negatif satu, positif satu, kos negatif dua. Tiada perubahan langsung. So, ini bukan redox. Okay. So, untuk redox, pertama, paling senang asalkan dia ada elektron, dia bukan redox. Okay. Ada elektron, dia bukan redox sekiranya dia ada unsur. Unsur menjadi sebatian, ah itu ialah redox. Okay, alright. Can I have the next question? Okay, juga dari Arun. Oh, uh, very small. <laughs> Boleh besarkan? Boleh besarkan tak? Ah, uh, uh, nanti baru jawab jawab soal itu ah. Okay. Ah, uh, daripada hit me, if zinc nitrate. Reacts with solution X to form zinc and magnesium nitrate. Ayah, this one, this one suddenly got magnesium here, no magnesium. So X is magnesium lah. So this is displacement. Okay, because magnesium is more reactive than zinc. Magnesium takes away the ox electron. Okay, so this is displacement reaction. Okay, so you have to answer. This X is magnesium, must be magnesium metal. This reaction is displacement. Magnesium more electropositive than zinc. So, zinc ion here is zinc ion. Ma. Zinc ion gains electron to become zinc. Eh? Magnesium releases electron to become magnesium ion. There. Okay. Can, alright. Can I have the next question? Okay, polymers. Polymers are when many monomers join together to form a large molecule. Okay, now, the monomer is a small molecule. Now, usually, let's say I have hydrogen. Hydrogen is like this, right? H2, right? Okay, let's say this is a molecule of hydrogen. 
if I take many, many, many hydrogen and I squeeze together, then they become hydrogen solid, let's say. Lah. But when I separate them and I release them, re increase the temperature, it will separate to become hydrogen gas again. What? So there are many, many molecules, but they are not joined together. They are just held together for a time being. When it melts or boils, it will separate. But polymer is not like that. Polymer is permanently joined together. And in order to be a polymer, what you study in SPM is it has to be alkene. It must be a double bond. Okay? So, for example, ethene, we draw like this. So, ethene might look very big, but ethene is just one molecule. Okay? So, let's say this is an ethene molecule. Ah. So, what we do is we take many, many, many ethene molecules. Okay, we take many, many, many ethene molecules and then we compress them, compress them, compress them. So what happens is ethene now, they are no longer separate molecules. Yes, they are together, but what they do is they form a bond in between the molecules. And then when you open up this box, ah, when you take them out from joining them together, and then you heat them out or whatever, you say, eh, they don't separate to molecules again. They are all stuck together. Uh, that is polymerization. Okay, so this is ethene. But when we want to draw the formula, we cannot do like this. We need to take this one and this one. We just move it down. It's the same molecule. We're just moving it downwards. So we just draw like that. Can you see? So we take many, many ethene molecules. Okay. So we compress them in a in a in a container with high pressure and high temperature. So what happens is they get stuck together and they start forming bonds with each other. So uh, there's another ethene here. This ethene forms a bond here. But each carbon can only have four bonds. This one suddenly has five. So I no need to hold two hands. La. We hold one hand. Ta-da! But then now this one got three. Ah, hold with the one in front. La. So it just goes on and on and on. So just now you notice it was individual ethene molecules. Now eh, suddenly everybody held together in one long chain. So this is now a polymer. Many, many joined together. It's called polymer. And this polymer is made from ethene. So we call it polyethene. Okay? So polyethene is what we know as plastic. La. This is what we use to make plastic bags, uh, plastic um, container, whatever. Alright? Okay. Can I have the next question? Can you explain about the users? Oh. Okay. Ele okay. So you're asking two questions. Uh. Electrochemistry and displacement is two different questions. Okay? Okay, the uses of electrochemistry. I think here you mean electrolysis, is it? The use of electrolysis got three. The first one that you learn is for electroplating. So electroplating is like this. Here you have an iron key. So here you have a bit of piece of copper. Put it in the solution. Let's say copper to sulfate. Okay? Can? Okay, you don't have to use copper. You can use silver. Same concept. So what happens is the copper in the metal dissolves. Here from copper ion. The copper ion goes to the iron and makes a layer around it. So this is called electroplating. Okay? Now the industrial use of electroplating is what? So what? Your iron key not so ugly. Your iron key is prettier now. Your iron key is coated with a layer of copper. It doesn't rust so easily. You can use copper or silver. Okay? Now, the second use of electrolysis is purifying. Purifying the metal. So, like this. 
here you have a piece of impure copper. Here you have some pure copper. You put it in a solution of copper sulfate. Okay, so why is the copper impure? Okay, so maybe got some things, for example, other metals or sand or whatever. Lah. Okay, and this one is pure copper. Now, whether it's pure or impure copper, it's still the element copper, so it can still conduct electricity. So the chemical reaction is still the same. The copper here dissolves to form copper ion. The copper ion here goes here and forms the copper. So here you will have a bigger and bigger piece of pure copper. And over here, the impure copper becomes smaller. And once it becomes smaller, the impurities will sink to the bottom. So that's how I get impurities out of the impure copper. Alright? Okay, so that is purifying. Now, the third function of electrolysis is uh, extraction of aluminium oxide. So basically, we have molten molten aluminium oxide and it's dissolved in cryolite okay and you make the anode the oxide will form oxygen and the cathode the aluminium ion will form an aluminium so this is how i get pure aluminium okay now uh, you don't understand how displacement happens displacement you must have a okay you, you must remember the electrochemical series la. okay the ones that are on top always 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 want to become ion the ones that are below always want to become atom so in this case here i put copper sulfate solution and here i put Magnesium. So, magnesium is a metal, but it wants to become ion. Copper is an ion, but it wants to become an atom. So, just nice lah. The magnesium will dissolve to become Mg2+. When Mg2+, it means it dissolves as magnesium ions. You cannot see the metal anymore. The copper ion is just now in the solution. The copper ion will receive the electron from the magnesium and say, Hey, I become copper and I stick to the bottom. So, that's why you see copper inside. Okay? Alright. Can I have the next question? Ah, okay. So, Antalera berikut yang manakah tentang bahan bagi Raja 2. Okay? So, 2 mole of water. And the other one is 3 mole of hydrogen gas. Okay, so uh, first thing is 2 mole of water. So this has 3 atoms. Right? 3 mole of hydrogen. This one has 2 atoms. So the amount of atom is the same. Because 2 times 3, 6. 3 times 2, 6. So the amount of atom is the same. Okay? So bilangan atom dalam gas hydrogen is Tiga darab, no, it's tiga darab dua. Dua-duanya ialah tiga darab dua untuk bilangan atom. Bilangan molekul dalam air lebih daripada bilangan molekul dalam gas hydrogen. Tak, bilangan molekul gas hydrogen lebih sebab tiga mol, mol molekul mah. Alright, bilangan atom dalam air adalah sama dengan hydrogen. Yes, so the last answer. Bilangan atom adalah sama. Okay, can I have the next question? Ah, oh, okay, mangkin. Alright. So, let's say kita ada satu bika yang dipenuhkan dengan hydrogen peroxide. Okay, hydrogen peroxide dia macam ni. Apabila tindak balas berlaku, hydrogen peroxide akan diuraikan menjadi air dan membebaskan gas oksigen. So, sekiranya kamu letakkan dalam bika saja, letakkan macam ni, dia akan bebaskan. Satu, dua, tiga, sangat perlahan. Tapi apabila 
Okey, sebab tindak balas ini, semua tindak balas yang berlaku, bahan tindak balas mesti berlanggar dan mesti berlanggar dengan tenaga pengaktifan. Ingat tak tenaga pengaktifan? Tenaga pengaktifan ialah tenaga minimum yang perlu ada oleh molekul untuk mencapai produk. So, sekiranya mereka berlanggar tapi tindak balas itu tidak ada tenaga yang cukup, tak ada ikatan kimia yang diatasi, mereka tidak akan bertindak balas. So, apa berlaku ialah kamu mesti panaskan atau menambahkan kepekatan, dia akan bertindak balas dengan lebih cepat. Tetapi, sekiranya kamu tambah mangkin. Nah, mangkin adalah spesifik. Contohnya untuk hidrogen peroksid, mungkin ialah manganese 4 oksida. So, apabila kamu tambah saja manganese 4 oksida, dia menurunkan tindak balas uh, tenaga pengaktifan. Dia kata, eh tak payah, susah-susah mempunyai berapa, begitu banyak tenaga, senang saja kita ada uh, perjalanan alternatif. Okay? So, sekarang tenaga pengaktifan diturunkan menyebabkan Molekul-molekul berlanggar sikit saja sudah cukup tenaga untuk mencapai uh, uh, produk. Oleh itu, tindak balas sangat-sangat cepat. So, apabila kamu tambahkan mungkin, mungkin dia akan berbuih-buih sangat-sangat cepat. Okay? okay? Next question. Okay. So, modern medicine, okay, what you need to remember about modern medicine is there's only three analgesic, antibiotic, and psychotherapeutic medicines. Okay, analgesic only, 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 only for pain. Hanya, hanya, hanya untuk tahan sakit. Okay? So, yang biasa, yang diberi kepada pesakit ialah oh yang paling-paling famous Panadol tapi Panadol itu jenama nama ubat itu ialah Paracetamol ok Panadol itu hanya jenama ok satu lagi ialah Aspirin ok kedua-dua Paracetamol dan Aspirin untuk demam untuk sakit yang sikit-sikit tetapi soalan yang paling biasa ditanya ialah mengapa Aspirin tidak boleh diberi kepada budak-budak Okey, di bawah umur 2 tahun. Sebab aspirin itu berasid. Sebab aspirin itu berasid, dia akan menyebabkan budak itu mempunyai masalah perut dia akan berdarah. Okey, itu yang pertama. Yang kedua ialah aspirin itu sebenarnya mengurangkan kebolehan untuk darat membeku untuk membentuk pembekuan darah. So tak baiklah untuk budak-budak. Tapi untuk orang dewasa yang mempunyai sakit jantung, mereka diberi aspirin sebab aspirin mengurangkan ke kemungkinan menjadi uh, bekuan darah di dalam badan. So kekurangan stroke, kekurangan uh, serangan jantung. Okey. So itu ialah kebaikan aspirin, tapi bukan untuk budak. Ah uh, paracetamol baik untuk budak. Okey, so itu energetik. Dia tanya itu saja. Okey. Antibiotik hanya untuk bunuh bakteria sahaja. Okey, nama-namanya yang canggih penicillin, erythromycin. Okey, dia buat daripada fung fungi. Okey, dan dia untuk bunuh bakteria saja, tak boleh bunuh virus. Ah, virus tu tak berguna untuk bakteria sebab virus tu tidak mempunyai sel uh, uh, dinding sel seperti bakteria. Now, bakteria itu dibunuhkan dengan antibiotik, kemudian antibiotik yang diberi kamu mesti habiskan khususnya. Mengapa mesti habiskan? Sebab sekiranya tidak dihabiskan, bakteria itu akan menjadi resisten. Resisten mak maksudnya, you makan lagi ubat tu pun tak guna, tak akan bunuh bakteria lagi. Okay, so itu ialah antibiotik. Biasanya dia kata, ah, perlu habiskan. Alright. Psikoterapeutiknya untuk penyakit 
Okay, not jangan ketulah untuk orang gira untuk mental illnesses. Contohnya ada stimulan untuk menjadikan itu uh, orang tu bangun, ada babi turat untuk uh, menjadikan orang tu calm down, okay, menjadi lega. So semua itu psychotherapeutic. Alright, okay, itu tiga kategori yang utama. Alright, next question please. Alright. Senang untuk ingat sebatian karbon kimia. Alright. So I so much dia. Okay. So contohnya So cikgu tak lukis hidrogen lah. Kamu fikirkan hidrogen sendiri. So ini dua. Nampak dia saja sama. Okay. So kamu cari yang paling panjang dulu. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ini metal. 4 carbon, butane. Okay. Tau butana. So dia 2 metal. Oh, satu perkataan lah. 2 metal butana. Alright. Di sini, kamu tak boleh kata, oh, cikgu saya faham. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Ah, ini tiga metal. Bukan, tak boleh macam itu. Sebab kamu mesti buat rantaian yang paling kecil. So, kamu kira dari sini satu, dua, tiga, empat. Tapi kira di sini satu, dua, tiga, empat. Ini dalam karbon yang kedua. So, sebenarnya molekul ini dan molekul itu sama saja. Okay? So, mesti ingat. Cari rantai paling kecil, kemudian yang metal itu mesti yang paling kecil nombor dia. So, inilah dua metal butana sama saja. Kedua-duanya bukan isomer. Tetapi sekiranya saya nak buat isomer, ha, macam inilah. So, di sini saya buat tiga karbon. Ikatan karbon paling panjang ada tiga karbon. Satu, dua, tiga saja. Alright. Yang ini metal, ini metal. Satu metal ialah metal, dua metal ialah dimetal. So, ini ialah tiga karbon propana. Dua, dua dimetal propana. Faham? Okay. So, dua, dua dimetal propana dengan dua metal butana. Duanya ialah C5H12. Oleh itu, ini semua ialah isomer. Yang ini dua bukan isomer. Ini dua ialah molekul yang sama. Okay. Alright. Uh, is there another question? Okay. Action of soap and detergent for cleaning dirt. Yes, can. Alright, now. Regardless whether it is a soap or a detergent. Okay. It has to have a long carbon chain. So it's basically CH3 and then CH2. CH2. CH3. CH2. 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 Very long carbon chain and then something here. COO and then it's negative CO and then NA positive. Okay, so what we do is, we, it's not only here, like it goes on and on and on. La. We don't stop here. So what we, what we do is very long. So we make a... Uh, simplified, we do like this. So this represents the long hydrocarbon chain. And then here, COO negative and Na positive. So this is when it's one piece of soap. Like that. It's solid. Okay? It's like if I got one piece of sodium chloride, uh, when it's solid like that, the sodium ion and chloride ion are still there, but they are stuck together. Okay, what you do is you dissolve them in water. <coughs> this part here, this whole soap ion here, will separate from the cation. They will separate. Okay, that's when they dissolve in water. So you will only have this one. Okay, I don't need to draw so long. Ah. And then COO negative. So where did the positive go? Somewhere else, lah, swimming around. Lah, not important. Okay, so now this whole thing is called a soap ion and the soap ion is very special okay it has this part here that absolutely absolutely hates water 
So because it hates water, it's called hydrophobic. And this part here, that absolutely loves water, called hydrophilic. Okay, now during exam, don't need to talk so long. You just say the soap ion consists of a hydrophobic part and a hydrophilic part. That's it. Okay, now let's go so you understand the hydrophobic, hydrophilic. Ah? So now, I draw a smaller one. Ah? So, long hydrocarbon chain, negative ion head. Okay? Same as just now, it said I draw smaller. It looks like a sperm. I know. Okay, so, this is your shirt. Your shirt has a big oil stain. So, this is oil. Your mom takes your shirt, put in... Soap water. So soap water has what? Soap water has soap and water la. So all the soap ions now are swimming inside here. They're all swimming around here. Now, who is so happy? Of course the head is so happy because they love, 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 love water. But who is very sad? The tail la. The tail hits the water. The tail is hydrophobic. So all the tails will dissolve in the oil. Get it? So you don't, how, you, how you explain is, soap dissolves in water. Step one. Soap ion has long hydrocarbon chain that is hydrophobic. And then you talk about the ionic part, is hydrophilic. No need to explain so much. Okay, so when in dissolve, when, a, when there is a dirty clothes or whatever, oil stain or whatever, the hydrophobic part will dissolve in the oil, the hydrophilic part will stay outside in the water. So now everybody is happy. Lah. The, the head is happy because it's in water. The tail is happy, it's not in water. All right? Now, what happens is when you wash your clothes, you, you scrub it. Agitation, right? Now. So we do side view, okay? This is your oil stain. This is your shirt. Okay? The soap head on outside, tail inside. This is water. Okay. Water. You scrub it. Okay. The head wants to follow the water. So the whole surface of the oil is lifted up. Like that. Off the surface of the cloth. Okay? And above. Yay! So now, now your shirt no longer has an oil stain. La. The oil stain has removed. But what happens is, because they keep moving, uh, these oil stains will break into smaller pieces and then it will float away with the bubbles. That's it. Now, detergent is exactly the same. Detergent is also long, 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 except here is SO3. SO4 negative, sorry, sulfonate. Alright, it's exactly the same, except here is a sulfonate instead of a COO negative. Okay? Alright, can I have the next question? Oh wow, can you make it bigger? <laughs> so sorry, can you make it bigger? I really can't see the question. Can you make it bigger? Alright, can I have the next question first? Uh, oh wow, uh, Raja Sembilan menunjukkan pembentukan getah terbalkan daripada getah asli. Okay, antara yang berikut, yang manakah uh, mengenai Raja di atas? Bahan Y, bahan Y is sulfur, okay? Sulfur diklorida, betul lah. Getah tidak terbuka mungkin untuk dioksidakan. 
uh, no B is wrong getah terbaka mudah menjadi lembut no uh, bawa ya lah hydrogen sulfida okay it's not sul it's not acid it's a uh, disulfur dichloride so the answer is A okay Arun this answer is A the 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 solution you use is disulfur dichloride that's correct okay it's not an acid if you make an acid are uh, you your poor rubber will all dissolve lah cannot use acid okay ah uh, can I have the next question ah uh, Victory Absolute uh, uh, Semua bahan tambah makanan dalam buku teks If you can, yes please But most important, please remember about um, uh, Please remember about uh, the easy ones lah Garam, uh, as, uh, vinegar, uh, cuka uh, Just remember these two lah The rest, if you can remember, it's good If you cannot, it's okay Alright, but uh, just read through Just read through Okay, because usually they ask you one or two questions only all right, and then of course, uh, uh, so sodium nitrite for for meat. Okay, sodium nitrite for meat. Okay, can I have the next question? Cikgu boleh tak aja pasal pencairan? Oh, okay, pencairan. Okay, pencairan is M one M one V one equals to M two V two. Okay, so untuk pencairan dia macam ni. Kita ada larutan asid. Oh, larutan anything lah. Let's say asid hydrochloric, uh, 0 0.1 uh, mole per decimeter cube. Okay, oh, so, okay. let's change it. 1.0 mole per decimeter cube. Sekarang di sini saya ada 10 centimeter cube. Cikgu kata terlalu pekat. Saya tak mahu guna kepekatan begitu tinggi. Saya nak kamu cairkan. So, kamu tambah 90 cm cube air. Okay. 90 cm padu air sekarang menjadi 100 cm padu asid hidrokloric. Tapi, kamu tak tahu kepekatan baru macam mana. So, kamu guna formula ini. M1 V1 equals to M2 V2. M1 ialah kepekatan asal 1.0. V1 isi padu asal 10. M2 ialah isi padu akhir sekarang yang baru. Berapa? V2 ialah uh, oh sorry V2 ialah volume isi padu yang baru isi padu baru ialah 100 okay so kamu kira saja M2 equals to ah kosong pada satu lah mol per decimeter cube ah inilah pencairan okay pencairan macam ini saja hanya tambah air suling sahaja so kamu mesti check Tengok baik-baiklah, cik soalan tanya apa? Sekiranya soalan tanya, apakah kepakatan asal? Apa, then you're looking for M1. Apakah isi padu asal? Then you're looking for V1. Apakah jumlah air yang ditambah? So, lepas dapat V2, tak tolak dengan V1. Inilah isi padu air yang ditambah. Sekiranya kamu cari V2, inilah. So, kamu kena tahu apa yang kamu cari. Tapi satu formula saja, M1, V1 ikut M2, V2. Okay, sekiranya buat... Uh, Pen, penutralan lah. Itu lain. Penutralan ialah <coughs> MAVA over MBVB equal to A over B. Ha, itu lain. Ini tu untuk titratan. Kita tambah asid sulfuric uh, 0.1 mol per decimeter cube. Kita tambahkan uh, 20 centimeter cube untuk menutralkan uh, larutan aqueous sodium hydroxida natrium hydroxida uh, kita gunakan sini uh, 20 cm padu tak tahu apakah kepekatan dia atau apakah kemolaran dia ok so MA MA ialah kemolaran asid VA isi padu asid MB Kemolaran alkali, ah itu apa you cari lah. VB isi padu asid, uh, isi padu alkali. A kepada B ialah apakah nisbah dalam persamaan kimia. So kamu mesti tahu apakah persamaan kimia lah. So imbangkan. Okay, so ini asid kan. So, asid ialah berapa nombor di depan tak ada. So, satu. Ni base. So, base dua. Okay. So, kamu buat formula semula. MAVA over MBVB 
A kepada V. MA, molarity acid 0.1. VA, volume acid 20. MB, molarity base ah itu apa yang kamu cari. VB, volume base 20 cm3. A ialah 1. B ialah 2. Okey. So kamu kira-kira-kira MB kamu ialah 0.2 mol per decimeter cube. Okay? Can? Alright. Uh, next question. Uh, can you ask me specifically what about chapter 45 that you want to know? Okay, I can't be telling you the whole chapter. Okay, you, you ask close-ended questions a bit. Can? Because it's a very long chapter. So you ask me like specifically, okay? Alright. So daripada Aziza Khalid. Uh, tindak balas antara 50 cm3 Natrium Ayudida dengan 50 cm3 oh, kedua-duanya 0.1 mol per decimeter cube plumbum 2 nitrat uh, ini ialah uh, haba pemendakan 0.1 also 0.1 ok <coughs> ok dia membebaskan 4200 joule haba apakah perubahan haba campuran tersebut ok so first thing is first You must write the equation. Aha. Now we have a problem. Okay? It has to be bilangan mol yang dibentuk. Okay. Bilangan mol yang dibentuk. Alright? So, ah, uh, They have to give you, okay, so MC theta is 4200, okay, okay, no need bilangan mahu, because it's only M, MC theta. So M is this plus this, 50 plus 50, C is 4.2, theta is what you're looking for, okay, so theta equals to, oh, 4200, Divide 4.2 Divide 100 So 10 C Your answer is C Okay Is that correct? Alright So this one is different This one they are not giving you the Harbour pemendakan They are just giving you Harbour dibebaskan So it doesn't matter Alright uh, Can I have the next question? Ah okay thank you So <laughs> 50 cm cube 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube of a uh, solution W reacts with 50 cm cube 0 0.5 mole per decimeter cube potassium iodide. Okay, it forms a yellow precipitate. Calculate the mass of the yellow precipitate. Okay, so your your solution W is this, is it? Is lead nitrate. I assume it's lead nitrate lah. Okay, I only get one mark for this particular question. Okay, so first thing is first, you write down the equation. Okay. So I mean, I'm assuming I don't know what is uh, W. So I assume it's lead nitrate lah. Okay, because um, you didn't give me the first question. So I'm assuming it's lead nitrate. So with potassium iodide. Okay, so you balance the equation, correct? Okay. Uh, 
So, ah, okay, this is what I was talking about just now. How much of this do you get? You have to calculate the amount of most of both, not just one, okay? So, it, it looks the same. It's not the same. It's not the same, huh? It looks the same. It's not the same. So, first, you calculate the amount of moles of lead nitrate. So, you do the MV over 1000. Okay, I know your mistake, right? So, M <coughs> 0 0.5, V is 50 over 1000. Okay, so you should get M, oh, what is this? M V over 1000. So you got 0 0.025. 0 0.025 more. Okay, you cannot end there. You cannot just say, oh, this one is 0 0.025, this one is double. No, it's not. Because they give you this much. They give you that the amount of moles of potassium iodide is also, okay, blah, 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 MV over 1000, right? Same, right? Uh, it's not the same, you know. I mean, okay, wait, let me finish first. What I mean is, it looks the same. It's both... 0 0.5, 50, 0 0.5, 50, yeah. But the ratio is not the same. You had to count this and this. Okay, now we look at this. If you have 0 0.025 of lead nitrate, the ratio is 1 to 2. How much of lead, uh, potassium iodide are, are you supposed to have? You're supposed to have double. You don't have that. You don't have that. You only have 0 0.025. You don't have this. You don't have this one. So if 0 0.025, how much of this will you need? Ah, divide by 2. 0 0.0125. Therefore, your lead iodide is 0 0.0125. That's why you made the mistake. Okay? So, so this is step one. This is your step two. Your step three is your moles of lead iodide is actually zero, zero point zero two five divided by two. You remember, this one not enough to react. You cannot just take zero point zero two five. Not enough. So, 0 0.0125 mole. Okay? And then your step 4, I hope you can see, uh, okay? Your moles of lead iodide is 0 0.0125 times your number. What is your molar mass uh, of lead iodide? Oh my goodness. <laughs> 207, 207 plus 127 plus 127. Ah, correct lah, 461, right? Yeah, 461. Okay, so times 0 0.0125. Yeah, okay, so you get, ta da, you get 5.76. 5 gram. Okay? Yeah, that's the correct answer. You forgot to divide by 2. You can't just simply use your number because, yes, they are giving you the same amount of moles, but the ratio is not 1 to 1. The ratio is 1 to 2. So, you must be very, very careful here. Okay? So, Arif, you tell me if you understand uh, the, 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 the working. Okay? So, yeah, here's how you get the answer. Remember, okay, here's where you went wrong, basically. Uh, you went wrong here. You went wrong here. Num step 3. You forgot to divide two. The lead iodide, it should be half because of the ratio. Okay, so that's where you ran wrong. So you took, uh, according to your answer, you took 0 0.025. You shouldn't. You should take 0 0.025 divided by two, then times the molar mass of lead iodide. Okay? All right. Uh, can I have the next question? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah. Uh. <coughs> okay, let me try and read it. Ah. Uh. Hundred centimeter cube or sodium? Oh, monoprotic. Okay, so okay, when you see questions like this, it's about the it's about weak acid and strong acid because they give you both monoprotic. So most probably for X is um, higher, right? So X is most probably a hydrochloric acid. 
So they give you the same volume, same concentration. 100, oh, not 1,000, sorry. 100 uh, centimeter cube, 0, 1.0. Oh my goodness, what did I just write? <laughs> 1.0 mole per decimeter cube of sodium hydroxide together with 100 centimeter cube of 1.0 mole per decimeter cube of uh, monoprotic acid X. So, monoprotic acid X could be sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid. Lah. Okay, we just keep it as hydrochloric acid. Okay, and um, we see both X and Y, if you look, if you read the question carefully, both X and Y are using the exact same amount of hydrochloric acid, the exact same amount of acid, and both acids are monoprotic. So that means that the only reason why the heat of uh, neutralization is different is because one is a weak acid, one strong acid. So, uh, okay, okay. So let's do this. X is hydrochloric acid. And Y is ethanoic acid. Okay, can? Alright, so that's two marks. Okay, two. Explain why there's a difference value here on your Oh, we actually did this question uh, last week. Alright, so let me explain it to you again. Uh, what happens is, okay, uh, what happens is, you must understand that hydrochloric, so this is for question two, uh, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and then you must mention it ionizes completely or fully in water. Okay, so meaning that when this HCl goes into the water, everybody becomes hydrogen ions. And when it's neutralized with the hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide, all of this will react together and they will release lots and lots and lots of water and they will release lots and lots of heat. Okay, however, <coughs> when you are using the weak acid, which is ethanoic acid. Okay. When you are using the weak acid, so I'll continue here, okay? When you're using the weak acid, ethanoic acid, you must mention it is a weak acid and it ionizes partially in water. Meaning that there are still lots and lots of molecules. So when you have a hydrogen ion that reacts with the hydroxide ion and forms water, heat is released but some of the heat release is reabsorbed. So you have to mention the part of it being uh, weak acid, ionized partially. Okay, and then you have to say during neutralization, some of the heat released is reabsorbed. Okay? And who is it reabsorbed by? It is reabsorbed by ethanoic acid molecules. You must mention it is absorbed by the ethanoic acid molecules. Why does it absorb by the ethanoic molecules? To ionize. Okay? To ionize the ethanoic acid molecules. Alright? Okay. So if acid X is replaced with 100 centimeter cube of sulfuric acid, uh, <laughs> what is the heat released? Okay, so here's a very interesting problem. Okay, now you see you have 100 centimeter cube sodium hydroxide. Okay, uh, 1.0 mole per decimeter cube. This gives you total of this MV over 1,000 uh, gives you 0 0.1 mole of water that is released. Correct? <laughs> MV over 1,000. Okay? And it reacts with 100 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid 1.0 mole per decimeter cube. So, your mole of, amount of mole of acid is also 0 0.1 mole. Okay? So if we write an equation, so 
0.1 mole of this reacts to 0.1 mole of this to react 0.1 mole of water. Remember, heat of neutralization is based on the amount of water, mole of water. Okay, now I replace the whole thing with sulfuric acid. My sulfuric acid is diprotic. Okay, but if you write the equation, Okay, so you use 100 centimeter cube of uh, ethanol acid, uh, sorry, sulfuric acid, one mole per decimeter cube, according to the question. Okay, you get 0 0.1 mole of this. Now this one is still the same, so you also get 0 0.1 mole. How much water do you get? Ha, this is the same as what the student asked just now. Uh, I can't remember the points that he asked just now. So if this one is 0 0.1, teacher, this one should be 0 0.2. No, it's not 0 0.2 because there's not enough of sodium hydroxide. If sodium hydroxide was 0 0.2, then your water will be 0 0.2. Now your sodium hydroxide is 0 0.1, so your water is also 0 0.1. La. So if you're still getting the same amount of water, you will have the same heat. Same amount of heat release because the amount of moles of water is the same. The acid is not completely reacted. Okay, can do you understand? So it's not to say, oh, just because I use sulfuric acid, now diprotic, no, it's not like that. Unless they use double the amount of sodium hydroxide, ah, then the heat is double because the amount of moles of water is doubled. Remember, heat of neutralization is based on how many moles of water. So this one, haba yang dibebaskan adalah sama sebab bilangan mol air yang terbentuk adalah sama. So you must show all your calculations. Okay, can? All right, can I have the next question? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Heat of precipitation. So heat of, so you need to know all the values. Lah. Okay, so let's say I have fifty centimeter cube. Uh silver nitrate. Add with, uh, so it's on 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. And then 50, they usually just give the same number one. Uh, sodium chloride, 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. Okay, and this time I'm just giving you an example. Okay, so the temperature goes up, let's say 5 degrees Celsius, let's say. Lah. Okay, so <coughs> step one, you calculate heat release. Heat release is mc theta. For heat of precipitation, you got two volumes, 50 plus 50. C is 4.2. Temperature, I'm giving you one example, so it's 5. Okay, so 100 times 4.2 times 5. So 2100. So this one is in the unit of joules. Okay, step two. Okay, so always change it to kilojoules. Okay, now step two, you calculate the amount of moles. So in this case, the amount of moles are all the same. So you just, anybody is the same. La. So M, V over 1000. So zero point zero 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 five. Okay, sorry, zero point zero zero five. All right. Now, finally, the heat of neutralization equals to negative the heat release two point one over amount of moles. So take. 2.1 divide to uh, so 420 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Yeah. So this is heat of precipitation. Okay. Heat of displacement. 
for heat of displacement it's exactly the same except you only have one volume of solution okay because you have only one aqueous and the other one is a solid so heat of displacement, everything is the same, except you don't have 50 plus 50. For heat of displacement, it's just 50 because you only have one volume. Okay? For heat of neutralization, for heat of neutralization, it's exactly, exactly the same as this one, heat of precipitation, because you've got two solutions. So it's acid and alkali, 50 plus 50 or 100 plus 100, whatever lah. Okay, only heat of combustion is different. So only heat of combustion is different. Heat of combustion is because you are heating up a solid, oh, you are heating up a solid using a fuel. Oh, sorry, you're heating up a solid, you're heating up a solution, or uh, you're heating up water using a fuel. Okay, so... Let's say using 500 centimeter cube of water. And the temperature goes up uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? And here is alcohol. Or let's say ethanol. Okay, now, uh, let's say in the end of the reaction, you use 2 grams of ethanol. Now, for this case, it's totally different. Okay? It's totally different. I mean, the formula is still the same, but what you're counting is totally different. So... You still count the heat. Mc theta. But your Mc theta is Mc theta of the water. M is the volume of water. 500. C is specific heat capacity of water. Theta is temperature of water. Okay, amount of moles is amount of moles of your fuel. So you take mass over molar mass. So ethanol is C2H5OH. It should be 46. Okay, now, your step 3 is the same. Negative 42 over 0 0.0435. Okay, so... So, negative 965.5 kilojoule per mole. Okay? So, can you understand? So, it's three different things that you count. Alright, can I have the next question? Please. <coughs> okay. Uh, like I mentioned just now, food additives, they will ask you, uh, why do you add uh, salt to a food? So, it because it uh, it reduces the water available for bacteria, uh, in, causes the water to come out of the bacteria, or causes the water to come out of whatever food you're using, and therefore the bacteria cannot survive, and then it kills the bacteria. Okay? Then they will ask you why you add uh, uh, vinegar, ethanol acid. So you add vinegar because it's acidic, uh, the, pH, the bacteria cannot survive in no pH, things like that. And then after that, uh, they ask you, why do you add uh, sodium nitrite? Okay, so sodium nitrite keeps the meat fresh, it... Uh, keeps it pink and so on. So this one is depends on what additives it has. Medicines, like I told you just now, I just uh, did it just now, we talk about analgesic, antibiotic and psychotherapeutic and then they ask you what is it for. Okay, uh, later you look through, you, you, you listen to the study check go again. You, uh, just now, I just repeated just now. The modern medicines, you have three, uh, analgesic, 
psychotherapeutic and antibiotic. So I just repeat briefly, analgesic is painkiller. Okay, so there's two kinds of painkillers that they always ask you, paracetamol and aspirin. And then they ask you which one is better. So I uh, usually ask you which one is for children. So children, we use paracetamol. We cannot use aspirin for children because it causes uh, internal bleeding for children because it reduces blood clots. Okay, and then after that, they ask you, uh, uh, children should be which one? Children should be given paracetamol. And then for antibiotics, they always say, okay, example antibiotic, just remember two, like penicillin, erythromycin. Okay, these are all in your textbook. You can just remember two. And then they ask you, uh, why, why, why does it not use on, uh, let's say, AIDS or, or HIV virus? So you say uh, antibiotics is only to kill bacteria, not to kill viruses. And then they ask you, uh, a person must complete the cause of antibiotics. Why? If you don't complete the cause of antibiotics, the bacteria will become resistant. It's very, very simple. And then psychotherapeutic, you say it's for mental illnesses. So usually they ask you, what's a stimulant, a barbiturate to calm you down, things like that. Okay, what is a psychotherapy uh, for ha a hallucinogen, causes to hallucinate and things like that. So it's just, they ask you a little bit, little bit for each. So those are the common questions. Okay, they ask you, what is it used for? Why do we use it? What's the alternative? Is it good? Is it bad? Okay, all right. Can I have the next question? Oh, formation of rust. Okay, uh, formation of rust. So everybody knows by now, rust. Rust basically, you must have at least one drop of water. You just need one drop of water. So this is iron. Okay, so iron is Fe. Okay. So Fe will only want to give its electron if somebody wants it. So who wants the electron? Oxygen and water. So oxygen dissolves in water, especially at the sides here, because the concentration is higher. It's easier to dissolve here, high, larger surface area. So it will dissolve here. So I'm sure you've seen this equation before. Water and oxygen become hydroxide. Okay, so the key thing you'll take back is they got the oxygen, the electrons. Who gave them the electrons? Iron lah. Iron said, come, let me give you electrons. So because iron says, I give you electrons, iron now is Fe2+, plus. it has started to rust. Okay, so Fe2+, plus is now an ion. Hydroxide ion is hanging around there. They will combine together to form FeOH2. Here's the thing. Isn't this green? Yeah, not yet finished yet. So the FeOH will be exposed to oxygen in the air. This one you don't need to know the equation. Lah. You just know oxygen in the air. And then it will eventually become Fe, okay? Fe3. This is rust. But rust is not just powder. It has water. So usually it's two water molecules. It can be anything actually. The more water that has more, but usually it forms two or three or five or whatever. So this is rust because it's oxidized with oxygen in the air. Okay? Okay, can I have the next question? Alright. So to determine the empirical formula depends which one. Okay. If you are determining those that are above uh they are non-transition metals. That means group 1, group 2, and group 13. Okay? Then you just use a crucible. For example, magnesium, group 2. Okay, just burn the magnesium. So you find the mass of magnesium, let's say uh, 2.4 grams. And then you react with oxygen, and then it becomes magnesium oxide. Uh, and then you find how much oxygen you use, let's say 1.6 gram. So that is, I mean after you minus lah. So that's how you find the mass of oxygen that reacts with the mass of magnesium. Okay, then you divide the molar mass. Uh, then you find the simplest ratio. Uh, then it's MgO. Ta-da, very simple. Okay, now this one, you cannot use iron. You cannot use copper. Why? Because they have more than one oxidation state. So cannot, 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 cannot. So those that are transition metal, we cannot use this crucible method, okay? So those that are transition metal, we use another more exciting method.
Okay, so the more exciting method that we use is called uh, using hydrogen gas. Alright, so what we do is So here, now, here we have, let's say Fe2O3, but you don't know it's Fe2O3, you're trying to find out. So here, <coughs> they flow hydrogen gas. So then you heat it up. So you find out what's the mass of the Fe2O3 and then you let the hydrogen gas go through it and then the hydrogen gas will come and take the oxygen and then it will form water. So your so basically you'll end up with Fe. Right? So you find the mass of Fe2O3, then you find the mass of the Fe and then you can find the mass of the oxygen. Ah. The ox okay, use atom, okay? You just divide, you just minus. So this mass minus this mass, you get oxygen, and then you do the same thing, find empirical formula. So for this one, you can do it for copper oxide and Fe2O3, those, actually anything that is transition metal, that are lower than hydrogen in the reactivity series. Okay, can? All right, uh, can I have the next question? Persamaan kimia untuk pembakaran lengkap propana. The following chemical equation represents the complete combustion of propane. Okay, so what is the volume of uh, oxygen yang digunakan if propane terbakar dalam udara? Okay, so they already give you the equation which is very good. Okay, so all you need to do is count. Alright, so let's see. They give you C3H8 plus 5O2 become 3CO2 plus 4H2O. Sorry, 5.5 grams of propane. So first, how much oxygen that you need? So first you find the amount of moles of propane. Okay, so what is propane? Uh, 12 times 3 plus 8, 44. Five point five divided forty four zero point one two five mole. Okay, so if this one is zero point one two five mole, this one is times five lah. So your moles of oxygen is zero point one two five times five equals to zero point six two five mole. Okay, and then you want to find volume of oxygen is amount of moles times molar volume. So the question gives you 24. So 15. So the answer is B. Okay? Okay, can I have another question? 15 decimeter cube. Oh, wow. Okay, so 25 centimeter cube of silver nitrate, 50 centimeter cube of sodium chloride, Ah, uh, this is the kind of question that you must calculate the moles. Uh. This is a very tricky question because they don't give you the same amount of moles. So who are you going to count? Uh, okay, so again, always write the equation. So, I'm wondering, are they, these all your trial exam? Untuk percubaan ke? Wow, very tricky uh, all the questions. Okay, so silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. So you get silver chloride and sodium nitrate. So you notice all the ratio is 11111. One, one, one. How come the moles not the same? Uh -huh. So 25 centimeter cube, one mole per decimeter cube. So we just straight away count MV over 1000. Huh? So you get 0 0.025 mole. Okay, sodium chloride 
is m v over 1000. So it is 0 0.05. All right. Now comes to your silver chloride. Which one do you use? You have to use the one that is less, of course. So this one is 0 0.025. So actually not that bad. Lah. If you counted the first one and you didn't see the second one, then you just count the same answer. Lah. Okay, so <coughs> initial temperature is 28. Final temperature is 31. Okay, so let's calculate MC theta first. Mass is... 25 plus 50. C is 4.2. Theta is uh, 31 minus 31 minus 28. It's 3. <laughs> 3 times uh, sorry, 3 times 4.2 times 75. So 945 joule like I said always change it to kilojoules trust me you will need it later okay so you change it to kilojoules alright now now we find the amount of moles is uh, we already know 0 0.025 so the heat equals to negative 0 0.945 over 0 0.025 divide 1000 divide 0 0.025 37.8. So your answer is B. <coughs> I hope you got it right for your trials. Okay, can I have the next question? Cikgu, macam mana nak buat persamaan ion untuk proses berlaku? Oh, okay. So tadi kamu sudah tanya saya untuk uh, larutan kalium dichromate berasid. So, Terminal negatif so di sini ialah rod carbon, tapi dia di dalam uh, iron 2. So, ferrum 2 hanya tahu sesuatu saja. Ferrum 2 hanya tahu membebaskan elektron jadi ferrum 3. So, that's it lah. Ferrum 2, men, ferrum, sorry, hi, what am I doing? Ferrum 2 akan mengalami pengoksidaan menjadi ferrum 3. Sebab dalam ferrum 2 sulfat ini ferrum 2. Dia men mengalami pengoksidaan menjadi ferrum 3. Elektron akan bergerak ke sini. Okey. Untuk bertindak balas dengan larutan nikromat. Okey. Ini tadi cikgu sudah buatkan. Cr2O7 2 negatif plus hydrogen plus electron jadi 2 cr3 positive and 7 h2o so 14 uh, 6 right yeah 6 okay so macam mana nak buat persamaan ion untuk proses yang berlaku oh persamaan ion you take oh persamaan setengah ini campur dengan persamaan setengah ini wah panjangnya okay let's write cantik cantik sikit nanti pelajar tak faham so fe2 plus jadi Fe3 plus plus elektron ini persamaan setengah. Okey, persamaan setengah di negatif ini. Persamaan setengah di positif. <coughs> so, Cr2O7 2 negatif tambah dengan 14 hidrogen ion tambah dengan 6 elektron jadi 2 ion kromium 3 dan 7 air. Okey, apa yang kamu perlu buat ialah Elektron mesti sama. Ini 6, ini 1. Ini darat dengan 6. So, jadi 6 Fe2 plus tambah dengan Cr2O7 2 negatif plus 14 hydrogen ion. Jadi 6 Fe3 plus plus 2 C. Ini macam persamaan, uh, what's that called? Simultaneous equation. Persamaan serentak. Is that what you call it in math? Okay. Ah, there. Tada. Ah, persamaan ion untuk proses yang berlaku. Macam mana nak terangkan proses yang berlaku itu benda negatif saja. Secara pemindahan elektron. Ferrum 2. Ion ferrum 2 memindahkan elektron melalui wayar ke uh, 
terminal positif di mana ion chromium, ion dichroma akan menerima elektron. Okay, kan? So, uh, that's all. Uh, perubahan warna lah. Green to brown. This one, uh, orange to green. Okay? okay? Can I have the next question? Okay, from Jocelyn. Okay, I also talked about this question last week. Uh, hard water. So, hard water is not air keras. Okay? Hard water is air liat. Air yang mempunyai ion calcium, ion magnesium. Ini menjadikan, dia akan bergabung dengan ion sabun. Uh, menjadikan ion sabun tak boleh larut. And it becomes very sticky. Menjadi pepejal. Okay, apakah... Um, okay, so... Uh, soap ions combine with calcium and magnesium ions form insoluble solid or you can just say it is insoluble in hot water okay <coughs> so if you can't use uh, if you can't use what's this soap then you use detergent lah. it's always so Detergent is better because detergent can be used in acid. Detergent can be used in hot water, but soap is more by is more environmentally friendly. Soap is biodegradable. Okay, uh, can I have the next question? Okay, this one is the M one V one question. Okay, so. Uh, first step is tuliskan persamaan kimia. Sulfuric acid dengan natrium hidroksida. Okay, so A is 1, B is 2. Okay, disebabkan sini tak ada nombor, so 1, sini nombor dia 2. Okay, tuliskan, uh, kirakan, uh, tuliskan formula, MAVA. So, kamu sedang cari, oh, write the chemical equation, oh, okay. Uh, and calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in this experiment. Oh, there. Okay, so, MA is the molarity of acid. 0.1 VA is the volume of acid 25 <coughs> MB is what you're looking for and <laughs> alkali is 25 centimeter cube alright and then the A is 1 B is 2 so your uh, should be it should be 2 lah it should be 0 0.2 so you take 20. So uh, 0 0.1 times 25 times 2 divide 25. Yeah, 0 0.2. Okay. Wow, that's a very easy 5 marks. That's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I have the next question? It's very easy, five marks. Do this during exam. Is that all they want? Write the calculation and calculate. Yeah, lah. that's it. Lah. Hmm. Can I have the next question? Oh, this kind of, Okay, this question. Okay. Actually, they usually don't ask uh, uh, zinc chloride and iron three chloride. They should ask uh, transition metal and non transition metal. But anyway, never mind. Lah. So the oxidation number so the question gives you zinc chloride and fe2o3 so the oxidation number of zinc is positive 2 oxid uh, remember no positive no marks and iron is positive 3 name so zinc is just zinc chloride because it doesn't have a different oxidation number and then iron is iron or ferrum like whichever you use okay iron 3 chloride so one question is they ask you why uh, this one has 
So usually this they don't use zinc lah. Usually they use magnesium lah. Then they will ask you, oh why is it the name different? Then you will say, oh because iron is a uh, transition metal has more than one oxidation state. Magnesium is in group two does has only one uh, oxidation state. You can just say zinc has only one uh, oxidation state. It's fine. Okay, next question. Leboran and mendakan, huh? Okay, le leboran and mendakan are two different things. Okay, leboran, yelah. Kamu ambil macam plumbum dua bromida yang pepejau. Kamu panaskan. Apabila sampai ke takat lebo, dia akan lebo menjadi cecair. So, cecair plumbum dua bromida merupakan leboran dia. Kenapa kita panggil leboran tak panggil cecair? Sebab ini pada suhu yang tinggi. So, biasanya apa-apa yang kita perlu panaskan untuk dia lebo, kita panggil leboran. Kita tak panggil cecair. Tapi maksudnya samalah, cecair lah. Dia cecair saja. Tapi sebab panas, kita panggil leboran. Mendakkan be beza. Mendakkan ialah kita membuat larutan uh, uh, garam yang tak larut dalam air. Contohnya, ini larutan aquas. Larutan aquas agenda mitrat. Tambahkan dengan larutan aquas natrium klorida. Maksudnya. Okay? So, ini semua larutan. Kita tak panaskan, tak buat apa-apa. Apabila ion argentum dan ion klorida bertemu, dia menjadi pepejal sebab dia ialah garam yang tak larut dalam air. So, dia menjadi pepejal yang mendak di bawah. Bukan kita leburkan dia, dia tiba-tiba menjadi pepejal di bawah. Uh, ini panggil mendakkan. Okey? Can you understand? Okey, next. Question. Resapan dalam tiga keadaan. Ha? Huh? Resapan? Oh, okay. So resapan. Um, do you mean dalam pepejal, cecair dan gas? Okay. So dalam pepejal, resapan berlaku dengan sangat perlahan sebab zara-zara uh, di dalam pepejal dipegang kuat dengan daya tarikan yang kuat dan dia sangat dekat. Okey, cecair walaupun molekul zara-zara uh, dekat tetapi dia boleh uh, mengalir di satu sama lain. So, resapan cepat sikit. Dalam gas, atom zara-zaranya uh, jauh dan resapan berlaku dengan cepat. Itu saja. Kamu bincangkan tentang uh, 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 ke, de, betapa dekat zara-zara di antara satu lain. That's it. Okey, tak ada apa-apa. Hmm, bukan sesat sangat Resapan di dalam pepejal sangat-sangat perlahan Cecair cepat, gas paling cepat Okay? Okay, can I have the next question? Oh, okay What is the number of hydrogen atoms in 51 grams of ammonia NH3? So you find the amount of moles first lah Mass over molar mass Three moles, then <coughs> you have three mole of ammonia. Each ammonia got three. So you take three times three times six point zero two times ten to the power twenty three. So you get. Five point four one eight atoms. Okay, can I have the next question, please? Wow. Okay, ini daripada pelajar Kamis. Wow. Diagram uh, Raja Lapan Pusat Mod juga susunan radas bagi penyaduran sebatang paku menggunakan argentum. Wow, so cool. So what they're doing is actually the metal on top is powering the the cell on top 
sel P ialah sel kimia, uh, sel voltik yang memberikan tenaga kepada sel di bawah. Wah, so cool. So yang atas ialah sumber tenaga, sel Q ialah menggunakan tenaga. That's so cool. Okay, so silver, silver, zinc, and iron. Okay, so okay, this one electron is out, and then the silver ions inside here receive the electron. So over here, they have layers over here. All right. So this one, the electron goes this way. Okay. So this one dissolve to become silver ion. All right. Okay. So. Type of cell, or type of cell P and type of cell Q. So this is a voltaic cell. This is a uh, electrolytic cell. Okay. Energy change. Energy change. Uh, chemical energy to electrical this one is electrical to chemical uh, positive terminal so this one this one is negative so the positive here is silver it's the positive this one uh, so it's the negative. This one is the positive. Both also silver. Okay. Uh, half equation at the anode. Okay, so anode here is zinc. Release electron. And not here is silver. Release electron becomes silver ion. Oh, this is a really interesting question. Observation at the cathode. So this one. Oh, so this one, huh? This is very easy. This is the anode here. This is the cathode here. Okay? So the cathode here, the electron comes here. This one is acid. So the hydrogen ion inside here goes up here and forms gas bubbles. Okay? But over here, the cathode is the iron. Iron is the cathode. Okay? So a layer of silver. Okay? Remember, for a voltaic cell, the anode is negative. So this is the cathode. For an electrolytic cell, the cathode is negative. The anode is positive. Okay? So it's the other way around. <coughs> Alright. Okay, so that's your seven marks. Okay? Calculate the maximum mass of silver deposited on the iron nail. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have no place to calculate here. I calculate over here, okay? So the maximum Alright, so uh so you take fifty times one over one thousand. That's the amount of moles of silver ions that will form. Okay, so you should get 0 0.005. 0 0.05. And then the mass, you take 0 0.05 times 108. 
So 5.4 grams. Okay? Cat? Okay. Can I have the next question? Can you... Good afternoon. <laughs> Halogen and metal. Do you mean halide and metal? Halogen and metal. Halogen and metal, not really lah. Oh, are you... Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, if you're talking about like this, that means a solid metal... Solid metal, uh, metal wool, react with chlorine gas. Are you talking about like this? And then becomes FeCl3, like that. Okay, if you're talking about this, then it's iron become Fe2+, plus or Fe3+, plus, and chlorine receive the electron, like that. Okay, so I'm not sure which one, or, or are you talking about... Um, like YouTube. If it's YouTube, it's not a metal. It is the metal ion. Like for example, here we have iron 2 solution, iron 2 sulfate maybe. And it gives out electron. And then here, we have chlorine water. And then, or bromine water, and then chlorine receives the electron. So, uh, I don't know which one you're talking about, but that's the redox. Lah. Either or either this is using iron metal, or this is iron iron sulfate. Okay, all right. Uh, if I'm not clear, can you just give me a, a, a specific question? All right. Uh, can I have the next question? Okay, penyediaan dengan Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Penyediaan dengan penghabluran semula. Okay. Uh, can you on the aircon? It's so hot inside here suddenly. Okay, thank you. Alright. Uh, wow, we only have three more minutes. Okay, so penghabluran semula. Okay, penghabluran semula basically, kamu ada garam yang tak, uh, <coughs> tak tulen. Tambahkan kepada air suling. Okay. Garam tak tulen lah. Okay. Lepas tu, kamu um, turaskan dulu. Okay. Sini kamu ada larutan garam, garam, garam yang tulen. Okay. Penghabluran semula dan penghabluran sama sajalah. Okay. So, kamu ambil ni. So, it's always the same thing. Panaskan <coughs> sehingga tepu. So, kamu panaskan sehingga tepu. Okay. Apabila tepu, kamu biar dia okay, sejat. Dalam suhu bilik, sejat. Kemudian, dia akan bentuk hablo. Okay. Air akan semakin semakin kurang, dia akan bentuk hablo. Apabila dia ada hablo yang cukup, ha, kamu turas. Okey, hablo akan terbentuk di atas kertas turas. Kemudian ambil hablo itu, keringkan di antara kertas turas. Ah, itu sajalah. Okey. Okey, I do we have time for one more question? Okey. Alright. So, uh, this is Uh, penghabluran semula Sekiranya kamu nak buat penghabluran sahaja uh, Di sini ialah penyediaan apa-apa saja garam lah, uh, Dalam bentuk pentitratan Atau bentuk asid dan uh, logam Atau asid dengan logam karbonat Sama saja Pro Proses untuk penghablu penghabluran sama sahaja Panaskan larutan garam sehingga tepu Tak boleh sehingga uh, Tak boleh sehingga Uh, kering sebab apabila kering dia tak jadi hablo dia jadi powder jadi sebuk tak akan tulen so penghabluran mesti panaskan sehingga tepu atau sehingga uh, takat penghabluran takat penghabluran ialah kamu ambil rod kaca letakkan di dalam uh, ambil keluar di atas rod kaca kamu akan bentuk hablo uh, itu ialah takat penghabluran okey uh, okey Vulcanized rubber, vulcanized rubber is, okay, let's say this is your rubber molecules, ah. 
rubber molecules, they are not very strong because the rubber molecules can slide over each other. So, vulcanized rubber is in between, they got sulfur bond. They add the disulfur dichloride solution. So, when you add the disulfur dichloride, ah, suddenly here got sulfur bond. Ah, so, this is the cross bond. So, now the sulfur molecules can... Okay, before you, before you add, the rubber is just like that. Ah. It's, it's all a solid, but all the molecules are like that. So, when you pull it, it will just pull away. But now, when you pull it, ah, you cannot pull away already. They are stuck together with the sulfur. Alright, so that is what vulcanized means. And cross, cross bond basically means cross between one molecule and another molecule, holding them together. Okay? Can? Okay. So, thank you guys for watching. Wow, this was really a marathon. Hope you can benefit from all this session. Don't forget to watch all the recorded Tanya Check Guru. So, if you missed anything, you can go back and see it. SPM seminars and also all the other videos on spmflix.com. So, Tanya Check Guru will return tomorrow for Principal Countdown and Biology. Bye-bye and good luck.